Hi, my name's Sonia Mainstone Cotton, and I'm doing this video is around children's wellbeing and helping us think about some practical ways in which we can support children when they return. Um, this is an area that I work in a lot, so I work for Baines, I work for the Nurture Outreach Service um, with Bright in Brighter Futures. We work across Baines with uh, four-year-olds who have social, emotional, mental health difficulties. So the techniques and the tools I'm going to show you are ones that we use all the time with the children that we work with. So we do know that when the children return, they probably won't be in quite that showing themselves in quite the way that they were before they left. Eight nine weeks is a long time to be away from uh, an education setting, from an early year setting. It's a long time to have been at home with just the family as I mentioned in previous films. So we need to expect that some of our children will be feeling quite stressed and anxious. They might not all be but some of them may well be and for that you need to be really paying attention to how we can support their well-being and actually we need to be paying attention to how we support the well-being for all the children on their return. Um, as we've said on previous videos, everybody's experience is going to be very different. But right now, when children return to school and to early years, well-being needs to be the central thought with everything that we do. Helping them to feel safe, helping them to feel loved, helping them to know that they are wanted and that you're really looking forward to being with them. But also they need to know that you as adults can cope with their feelings and their emotions right now. They need to have adults who can help them to co-regulate. They need to have adults who can be alongside them and be calm. That is so important. So if a child is feeling anxious and distressed, they need an adult who can be calming alongside them. They need an adult who helps them to feel safe. So some of the tools I'm going to show you will help you in ways to do that. And one of the first ones is bubble breathing. So I talked about in the adult well-being, 7-11 um, breathing and how that can help you if you're feeling quite stressed and anxious. That's really difficult to do with children. But bubble breathing works in the same way. So for this, I would encourage you to have small pots of bubbles for every child. You see there's concerns around cr cross contamination. So if you buy small party bubbles like these, you can buy them on Amazon, they're about £5 for 24. Write each child's name on the pot of bubbles so they know it's their pot, no can cross contamination. You can then refill the bubbles later at another point so you can buy a bigger pot of bubbles or make your own bubble mixture and just refill them. So then you've always got them. And with bubble breathing it's very simple. You take the lid off obviously it's a bit tricky but as they get older they'll be able to so you just put your thumb under the lid and take it off you take a deep breath in and you blow out as you breathe out you blow through the bubble wand that one didn't work very well let's try again Children love bubbles, we all know that in early years. But bubble breathing is a really useful way of just slowing down their breathing. If a child is quite anxious, they'll be breathing quite quickly. So it's a really lovely way of just slowing that down. And it works really well. Often we think that bubbles are just going to over excite children. But if you explain to them why you're using it, we're using our bubble breathing as a way of helping us to slow and feel calmness. Once we've taken a breath and we've blown the bubbles, we're then going to watch them. With the slightly older children, with your preschoolers, you could talk about maybe if they're worried or anxious, they can imagine that their worries and anxieties are blowing away in those bubbles. And that can be really useful to do. 
Um, and then once they've done that a few times, then they could then chase the bubbles and pop the bubbles and, and all of those kind of things if there's room and safe space and whatever to be able to do that. But bubble breathing can become your regular friend. It's something that I use a lot in my nurture work with children. I use it regularly and it's often one of those tools that I suggest that children have all the time, that their staff are able to use it with their children. Another one along with... Um, bubble breathing and other breathing exercises called bee breathing so if you do yoga regularly you might be familiar with bee breathing so for bee breathing what you're going to do is you're going to be taking a deep breath in and you're going to breathe out and as you breathe out you're going to make a humming noise but to do this I want you to put your ear your hands over your ears so you do this with the children and again you do it alongside the children so you don't ask them to do it on their own but you do it with them with all of these things you do it with the children it's really important so you're modeling and they can see that it's safe for you to do it as well as them so you take a deep breath in i'm going to show you once but i'd suggest that you do this a few times with your children so deep breath in mm. And you'll notice by doing that, if you haven't tried it, give it a go. You'll notice by doing that, it makes a kind of slight vibration noise. Some children really love it. If you've got children with sensory processing, they might find that a little bit hard. So they could hold their hands slightly away from their ears, maybe. But give it a go and see. Those are both examples of mindful breathing and mindful um, breathing exercises you might want to do. If that's a new area for you, I'd really suggest now is a good time to get into some mindful exercises with children. There are loads of resources out there. Dolly Kinderley have a really good new book about mindfulness for children you might like to look at with some lovely examples. The other thing you could do is go onto YouTube um, and look at Cosmic Kids. They're great. They have some really good yoga and mindful exercises one of the ones i use a lot on cosmic kids is called starfish breathing so that's youtube cosmic kids kids starfish breathing and for that you lie on your back and it's a taught through meditation um, imagining that you're a starfish it's great it's really good so i'd recommend that one the other one i'm going to suggest is um feather breathing so for this you would give each child a feather again you could have a you could have a pack for each child, couldn't you, of, of calming activities and it's their own pack that they only use. So you could write on the bag, you know, Harry's pack and there could be some of the things in there that's just for them. So for this, it's just the child has a feather. So hopefully you can see my feather there. You lay the feather on the palm and you take a deep breath in and you gently blow out and watch the feather move. And ideally you want to try and get the feather to lift up, although it's not working for me at the moment. There, it moved. And you just gently do that. Again, that's just a very focused but very calming activity for children. Another one to think about would be Play-Doh. So we use Play-Doh loads. I know there's been lots of conversations about whether Play-Doh is safe to use or not safe to use. I'm recommending if you're using Play-Doh for a calming activity, then the way you could do it is to give children their own individual pots. Now, either you buy Play-Doh in the pots um, or maybe you do that once and then once you've used it up you could then replace that with your own play-doh but again put it in individual pots for children write their name on the pot you can buy play-doh pots again from amazon you can buy them in bulk for not a huge amount of money um, or find a load of pots and, and make your own but make it individual for the child would be the way around cross-contamination the reason why play-doh is really useful is it's a very good way if you've got a child who's feeling really agitated play-doh is a great way of just getting rid of some of that agitation so the way that they can really knead it and move it and play with it they can pummel it you could use those words i'm wondering if you're feeling 
It's like you've got lots of feelings inside you at the moment and they're fizzing about. Let's try using some Play-Doh and let some of that out. That can be really useful. It's certainly something that I'm recommending to schools that they have um, on every table for a child who's returning. For all children, not just the children with social and emotional difficulties, but for all children, it's really useful. So you can squeeze it. It's a bit like... Um, some schools are using, and maybe early years are using um, dough gym, so you kind of do it in that kind of way. Although this isn't about the dough gym exercises necessarily, but it's about allowing children to just get out some of those strong feelings that they might be having at the moment, and you could talk about that. So play dough is really useful. Another idea that you could do, if you've got children who are quite worried and are quite anxious. You could make a worry doll. So you might be familiar with the book Silly Billy by Anthony Brown, which is a really lovely story. And in there, he makes some worry dolls. So Alistair Bryce Clegg, um, who you may be familiar with, he has a website up, ABC Does, it's called. And um, at the beginning of lockdown, he was encouraging early years people to send in ideas of what could be done in lockdown. And there were some amazing ideas on that. Incredible home learning. It's, it's under that tab. So it's worth going and having a look. But one of the ideas on there was worry dolls, which I really liked. So here's one I made earlier. So you can make worry dolls with children. Read the Silly Billy story. Find a stick. Give each child their own stick. Again, put their initials on the bottom so they know it's theirs. Give them some wool, have their own wool in their area so you're not cross-contaminating and sharing. And get the child to wrap the wool around the stick. So I've used two colours and then a skin colour at the top. And then I've just drawn in a face. So really simple, really active, lovely activity to do. You can make a few, you can make a whole family. But making worry dolls could be really useful. I think don't be afraid to use that language with children. If you think a child is worried, as I said in a previous video, use that language um, and use this time to do lots and lots of, as we said earlier, as we said on previous videos, lots of emotion talking, lots of emotion language. Look out some of those really good books around um, feelings and emotions that can be really useful. Um, on another video, I'm going to share with you some what I consider to be some really good social and emotional books that might be handy and I'll show you, show you those that you might like to consider trying to get hold of. Doing lots of um, language and storytelling and talking and checking in about feelings and emotions at the moment is really important. Thank you for that, for listening. My final video is going to be around things that we can do outdoors with children to support their well-being outside.